Hello everyone, it's Marion Wallace with Restoring Ghettos Forgotten. I'm here with a little short video uh, about the plight of the black woman and how we can make our lives a lot easier. Um, if you haven't done so already, please click and subscribe on my YouTube channel for more informative, real videos. Um, I appreciate you guys for stopping by, I really do. The plight of the black woman, and I'm gonna use an easy example, simple. I don't have a lot of time. I gotta get in the office and, and take care of some things, but um, simple example of the plight of the black woman. And um, yesterday, well, all week, I've been scrambling and working, working, working really, really hard uh, to get to to, to to create a balancing act of taking off the different the different hats that I have to put on throughout the day. So I just I did that all week. And yesterday was Friday and today's Saturday. And so yesterday I was like really stressed about the fact that I had been working back to back and I hadn't had time uh, to make grocery. And it didn't dawn on me. And I was like, man, it's, it, it's so grueling going into the store, especially in the evening time when it's busy on a Friday, people are trying to get food for the weekend for their families. And it's just overcrowded. I just was not feeling it. But I had been so conditioned over the years. That's just something that I do, regardless of the fact that now they have something called curbside pickup. And that just came into my mind. And I said, wow, I can try that. So I tried it. I had never done it before. I got online. I shop at HEB. I put in the items that I need. I paid and I picked a date and a time for me to just go by and pick it up. So I said, oh, wait, okay, great. I'll go pick it up at, you know, after work, after I leave the office. And I went through all that, got there, parked in my little spot, keep my little text, my little number in so they know that I was there. They brought the uh, grocery out. I didn't even have to get out of my car. They put it in my trunk and I was good to go. And I was so relieved. I was like, <sighs> one thing off my list. I said all that just to say something as simple as making grocery every week. Um, you know, we can find ways to lighten our load that way. Either you get someone else to help you or if you don't have anyone to help you. Think of things like I just mentioned. It doesn't take any time to go on your laptop and order your food, pay for it, and then pick it up like after work or after, a, you know, another thing that you had to do or after picking up the kids or whatever the case may be. That can help our plight. And so it's real. It is so real. Uh, so that's just a simple example of how we can make life easier for ourselves, even though it's, you know, it's extremely hard, especially for single women, uh, single women with children. You know, you can, you can, you, you're trying to do this and it's so hard and uh, sometimes it's almost impossible, but we managed to get it done because God has put resilience in the black woman and there is nothing we can't do. And so that's just an example of how we can make things easier for ourselves and also another another way to how to make e things easier for ourselves is to start being a little bit more gentler with the, with ourselves speak kindly to ourselves treat ourselves nice encourage ourselves you know when you wake up in the morning you want to say you want to you know say positive affirmations in the mirror and just love on you just appreciate the gift of life and appreciate how God made you because he made you unique and you're different and you're special. And I don't care where you came from, what you've been through, what education you have or don't, you're still special because God created you and God did not make any mistakes on you. So this is a word of encouragement to the black woman, the young black woman, the, you know, all ages of women. We all experience it. We experience fighting on our job. You know, we always have to prove ourselves more than our counterparts we always have to be so much more better than our counterparts we always have to be on our stuff i'm talking about educationally you know every in every area we always have to we can't half ass anything we have to come with it and even with us coming with it we catch hell and if there's men looking at this this video you have to understand your woman when she walks out the door in that morning she's facing a whole nother battle not that you aren't but she's facing a whole nother bat battle that other groups of women never have to experience because she has to go out there and be 10 times better than her counterpart. And she's still put in last place if she works at a company or whatnot. 
it's not equal. I mean, people talk all day long about equal wages and, and, and fair and equal treatment. That don't happen for us. We have to stand up for ourselves and fight for that equal treatment and those equal rights every single day we go out. So remember that, and this is me talking to the men. If you're, you know, you're married, you have a lady, remember, when she comes home, if she comes home with a little attitude, she don't work 10 hours, just give her a hug. Just say, baby, it's gonna be okay. And maybe make her dinner. Maybe you gonna make grocery for a change. Maybe you cook her dinner. Maybe you have her water in the tub. If you make it home before her, that'll help your woman's plight because it's hard out there for us. And we need support just like we need to support our men. Women need support from our men. We're not here to put, and, and, and I think that's where some of it has gotten mixed up. Everybody believe that the black woman can carry this heavy load because we do it so well. But just because we do it so well don't, don't mean it's not tiring or exhausting. And eventually when you put too much load on something, it breaks. And then once it breaks, who's gonna fix her? Who's gonna fix her? If she's fixing everybody else, if she's helping everybody else, if she's caring after everybody else, who's gonna fix her? Then she has to pull herself back up between God and, and her own will. She has to eventually get to back, you know, fixed again. Why even break her in the first place? We need help, you guys. I'm telling you right now, we need help and we need it now. The plight of the black woman is real. And I'm not saying the plight of the black man isn't real. I think that most women do a really good job supporting their men and what they want to do or what they need to do with their lives. We're encouraging. I mean, we pray for you. We love you. We feed you. If a woman feeds you, she loves you. I'm telling you now. If you got a girl, and I'm talking to me and now, you got a girl and she don't cook for you, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. If she always wants you to buy her these expensive meals and expensive dinners, not that she doesn't deserve it, but if she don't cook for you, I don't know, you know. Because a woman that loves you, she gonna cook for you. If she don't know how to cook, she gonna learn how to cook. Yeah. But I said all that to say, don't always leave it on your woman to do everything. Help her out a little bit. And then maybe, just maybe, you can get more attention because she's not so exhausted by the end of the night. She's put on all these different hats. She's did all these different jobs. She's taking care of the kids. She's made groceries. She's clean. She's cooked. You know, she's doing all of this. And then by the end of the night, you expect to get frisky. No, you get nothing because she's so dog dead, drained and tired. And you haven't lifted one finger to help her throughout the day. Shame on you. And I'm talking to our men. You need to help more. And it, and it goes to hand in hand, like with the man that works all day. You know, you working all day long, you bet you creating a balancing act. You might be, you know, going to school, you're working and, and you're doing all these things and you work 10 hours or whatever. And you you come home and, and she's sitting on the phone, on the couch with the TV on blasting, but she's scrolling her phone and you'd be like, babe, did you cook dinner? Oh no, I didn't have time what you've been doing all day you know then you may need to you know rethink some things because a mate a partner we're supposed to come together to add to each other and complement one another and help each other's plight because we both have them but if you have a mate that's not helping you you may be with the wrong person because you need someone to help you in your walk in your your struggle you know, we were put here, I'm not saying everything's all doom and gloom because many of us, we work really hard, we do well, and our lives are, are good for that matter. But it doesn't mean we're not gonna have trials and tribulations and things we have to go through. God did not promise us a perfect life. But I think we can get as close as possible with the right people on our sides. So in saying all that, I just wanna encourage us to come together and really be there for each other's plight and remember that just because that person has an attitude or they have a frown on their face the first, you know, after they come home from a long day, don't immediately take it as a personal attack. Sit down and talk to the person and say, hey, babe, how was your day? And then they may unload all this stuff on you. And then after that, you have to know how to bring it down, bring the mood down and say, here, let me just sit down. Let me take your shoes off. 
let me go get you a glass of wine so you can kind of relax i'll make dinner tonight you know and that's going from from two different sides you know i'll make dinner tonight don't worry about it or we'll just get takeout you know we can do things to make each other's lives a lot more tolerable because it is not easy i don't care how people try to claim that it's easy and they try to make it look like it's all glamorous it's not easy and it's not all glamorous and we have to really grind and so why not help each other's plight by being there for one another so initially it started off as the black woman's plight but we also have to take into account ladies that men have a plight as well and we need to be active participants and actively helping them helping men out especially if you're a stay-at-home mom or your stay-at-home wife Make sure the house is clean. Make sure he has a hot meal. Even if you, if you don't know how to cook, order something. But make sure he has a hot, healthy meal home for him after he's worked 10 to 20 hours a day. Make sure your house is clean. Make sure you don't have an attitude because you've been home all day. You've had plenty of time to rest. Have a smile on your face and spoil your man. Vice versa. Men, your woman done worked all day. You made it home before her. Have dinner prepared or have you know something to help us out and we can build together and be you know more happier and content in the relationship so that we can help each other's plight um so i think i'm done because i need to get out of here and get in this office and get some stuff done but um again uh, i promised that i was going to try to put out push out two videos a week i'm really busy i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do that but this is my second one for for the week so i'm starting off good this year i appreciate everybody that checked out uh, this video i really appreciate you uh, remember to always put god first i love you talk to you soon Bye bye